So today, as expected, the San Jose Earthquakes officially announced the firing of Mateus Almeida after being with the club for three and a half years. And also, as expected, I am going to do a video talk about the tenure of Almeida being with the Quakes for three and a half years. And by the way, his firing, I think, is the fastest that any MLS team have fired a head coach in the start of the season. I mean, I know last year when the first head coach was fired, which was Chris Armis, uh, Toronto FC basically fired him after 11 games. And the only head coach I know at the top of my head that got fired sooner than when TFC fired Chris Armis last season was Alan Koch when FC Cincinnati fired him after just 10 games in their inaugural season. But as I said, you know, we knew this was going to be the case. And in some way, I think everyone in the Quakes fan base are kind of relieved the fact that this has happened because this was just long overdue. And I've said it many times, this should have happened in the off season. And the fact that it kind of kind of dragged into the season, uh, it just feel, feels like it was inevitable that eventually he was going to be, be fired. Though I will also say that, you know, there was definitely some hint that maybe it wasn't going to happen because like I said, the Quakes and Almeida was in a very sticky situation where, you know, the Quakes could, could easily fire him because Almeida did all the, the things that, you know, a head coach would definitely get the, the axe. And I've said before how pretty much if Almeida was on any other team, he would have definitely got the axe by, by week number three. But because of this sticky situation where the Quakes are not really want to pay, pay Almeida a release clause or a clause that if they do fire him, they have to pay them a certain amount of money. It basically went waited for a very long time before the Quakes kind of just simply said enough is enough and that they just want to cut losses and hope that maybe this is a way to of course recover this season which I'll talk about a little bit later that you know I still don't have a lot of hope that this this season is salvageable but in terms of the overall record for for Mateus Almeida during his Quakes tenure uh, he finished with a 31, 25, and 42 record. Obviously, it's definitely not a good record. And that anytime when you go through that many years and have a losing record, and especially at the rate of how nowadays in MLS the, the coaching turnover is at an all-time high, you're not going to have a job for a, a very long time. Though, I will say that Almeida is definitely not the worst head coach in the San Jose Earthquakes history. In fact, he's kind of long away from them. There's actually some even worse coach that has come from from the Quakes and that I will still say that to to this day Michael Starhey is still the worst head coach ever in San Jose Earthquakes history. I mean, I definitely don't want to remember what happened in 2018 of how disastrous that season of course was. And one thing that I will say as we get into the talk about the highlights of Mateus Almeida is that he got to transform th this Quakes team to pretty much being one of the most exciting if not the most exciting team to watch and I've said many times from the the time when Almeida was with the Quakes you you simply cannot miss watching them if you're a neutral because they play these crazy games that just simply doesn't make any sense but it's so entertaining that you you just want to of course keep watching them and I also said many times before as a fan of the team you know I mean as a neutral if you're a neutral of a team it's exciting to watch but as a fan of a team it's definitely not fun to watch when when I go through the the the, the so-called Almeida ex experience, where it's just kind of up and down and up and down throughout the season. Now, uh, the current Quakes record is 0-3 and 4, which is is the worst start in team history, even worse than when they they started that disaster 2018 season. Because remember, they actually got their their first win of the season in that disastrous 2018 season in their season opener against Minnesota United, and then they of course went on that 12 game win. Let's run that. That basically cement themselves to be, become wooden spoon uh, favorite, um, and you know this season, I, it's still early to say that they are wooden, wooden spoon favorite because there are still some really bad te teams in in MLS right now. But but right now now at least they are at the top of the chart in terms of the wo wooden spoon race. Uh, but going back to his first season with with the Quakes. I mean, this was really the year that Almeida really not only introduced himself to the league, but kind of introduced the man marking system to MLS because, you know, the man marking system is something that is just completely unorthodox, not only in MLS, but really in the game of soccer. Like you don't see a lot of t teams around the world that use the man marking system. I think the only one that kind of used something similar to what Almeida did was Marcelo Bielsa with Leeds United. And there, thus that there's, that's why there's always 
that comparison between Bielsa at Leeds and why he produced some really entertaining Leeds teams, just like what Almeida does with the Quakes. But in his first year, he finished with a 13-5 and 16 record, finished with 44 points, scored 52 goals and allowing 55 goals with a goal differential of minus three. And he he finished eighth in the West with for, with this team. And unfortunately, they did miss the playoffs, but not by much. I mean, they literally had had, an, had a a game where it was pretty much almost like a play, playoff game in, on decision day against the Portland Timbers, where if the Quakes would have won that one, they would have been in the playoffs. But unfortunately, they weren't able to win that one, and they miss out on the playoffs. But the very next year, the Quakes did make it to the playoffs, because despite the fact that they did finish eighth in the Western Conference, this was the year of the, the covid short season uh where you know if you finish eighth in the west you still would make it to the playoffs because of the expanded playoffs uh but in terms of the overall record they finished with an eight six and nine record finished with 30 points uh they scored 35 goals that season while allowing 51 goals which was by far the wor worst uh go goal allow mark and this is also kind of a of uh, a time when you can definitely see some teams kind of start figuring out the man marking system and I'll actually talk about a little bit more of when exactly when teams really started to figure out how to play play the man marking system uh, and the goal differential was minus 16 but like I said they finished eighth in the Western Conference just good enough to make it to the playoffs though they did lose to Sporting KC in a PK show in the first round and really in a classic Quakes and Almeida chaos ball fashion they lost to SKC in a PK shootout after the game of course was was, was tied at at three apiece but they did finish top of their their group in the mls is back back tournament uh only to lose to minnesota 4-1 in the quarterfinal but that's still considered a success because you know coming into that tournament i didn't have a lot lot of expectation for for the quakes coming into the tournament consider how bad they they were looking in the start of the season before that long pause but they did they actually went when when pre pretty far into the tournament and keep in mind that was also the same group that that the 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 seattle sounders was in and and the other team of course is the chicago fire and the vancouver whitecaps and well the the other two teams are teams that you expect the quakes to get a win i didn't think they were going to to be top of the group and even get a new new draw against the seattle sounders in the mls is back term and consider everybody thought that the sounders were a team that was built to win the MLS's back tournament, which later Sounders fans would be very p pissed about it because they found out that their their main rival, the Portland Timbers, would win the, the tournament later. Now, in 2021, uh, in his last full season, uh, the Quakes finished with a 10, 11, and 13 record and finished with 41 points. Uh, they scored 46 goals while allowing 54 goals, so they definitely done much better in terms of the defensive department, though a lot of that came in the second half of the season. Like, the second half of the season was when the Quakes Re really done much better job in the defensive part of the field and really that was kind of the time when Almeida kind of did start to go away from the man marking system and kind of go with with the the traditional you know, system where it kind of make make the quakes a little bit boring to watch almost reminds me of the Dominic Kinnear era but you know at that time it, it worked out perfectly for for the team they were conceding less goals and they did just enough on the attack to get get wins and get resort to get themselves out of a a hole um or I'll actually get themselves in a good position to make it to the playoffs but unfortunately they sputter it the latter part of this season uh finishing in 10th place in the western conference and once again missed the playoffs which brings us to 2022 in a year where there was some 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 people thinking that you know last, last year with them missing the playoff playoffs maybe this this year it's going to be an improvement especially with some of the moves that they made in the off season, but here's the problem: some of the move that they made in the off season was clearly made for for life after Almeida, and this is also kind of why I said that they should have fired him this off season and bring in a new head coach. Because if you bring in a new head coach and you already built a team that is set up for this new head coach, the Quakes would never be in the the position that they're in. And I even said that I predicted that, that the Quakes were not going to do well this season because as much as they do have some decent talent in in this team. You know, when you have a head coach that is clearly sabotaging the team as what we see with what Almeida is doing, yeah, they're not going to go go very far. And to no one's surprise, not only they have not gone, gone very far, but they're literally right now dead last in the league. And then eventually, as I said, the Quakes kind of had enough, enough of him and eventually fire him today on April 19th 
2022. Now, in terms of the highlights for Mateus Almeida, and normally I actually don't put the highlights of a coach that being fired unless they have a long spell with the team, but there were some highlights with the way that, again, you know, they Almeida really has transformed this Quakes team to be the most entertaining team to watch in MLS, especially in the 2019 and 2020 years. I mean, though, some of those games where you see, see Almeida just kind of go all out attack and just kind of man mark like crazy. It's something that we have never seen in MLS. And anytime when you see a team do something that's kind of out of the ordinary, you can, you know, there's could be two, two things that could happen. Either that team is going to do very well because nobody can figure it out or that team eventually is going to crash and burn. And I think the crash and burn really can't, Kind of happened in the latter part of the season when the team kind of was fi figured out and there was started to be a blueprint of how to play the man marking system that Almeida implemented. Uh, he did guide the team to the playoffs for the first time in four years in 2020 and did better than expected in the MLS's back tournament, making it to the quarterfinal. And then finally, he brought something out of the ordinary to the league with the man marking scheme, and that again, you know, it's something that we have never seen seen before, and that. That anytime when you bring something that we have never seen before, I think it's definitely good for for the league because you know I know a lot of teams want to co paste or copy and paste the the formula as some of the, the the successful team in the league, which I have seen teams have done that in the league and they haven't really had a lot of good success in terms of doing it because you know yes you want to implement what you want to kind of copy the success of some of these more successful teams like a Seattle Sounder or a Atlanta. United, but you know, if you don't have the the right p p pieces, and and more time or not, it's actually harder to try to 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 create the the same su success. And that really, I don't think there's a lot of team that you know trying to copy the same formula that we we seen with these successful team that turns out to be successful too. Now the downfall for for Almeida again, the first big downfall really is that teams really kind of found out how to deal with the man marking system, and you know Almeida just refused to adjust. I think the first team that figured out the Almeida man marking system was actually Minnesota United. I mean Adrian Heap was really the first head coach that really cut kind of put provide a blueprint to how to play the the Almeida system, and hence that's why the Loons always dominate the the Quakes whenever. They they play against an out whenever they play against them and play against an Almeida team and as as the the teams have started to figure out and Almeida continue to be stubborn and maybe committed too much into the system while making no adjustment whatsoever, that's when things things start to go bad. I mean we there's a reason why the best head coach in this league are willing to to adjust their system when maybe teams have a blue blueprint in terms of how to break them them down. But, you know, with Almeida, he just wasn't able to adapt. And when you don't adapt and when teams start to figure out, that's when things could, could start to go go so sideways for you. Uh, all of his signings that he made during his tenure has not performed well in MLS. I mean, guys guys like Carlos Fierro, um, Andy De Rios, uh, Oswaldo Alaniz, and even some of the current Quakes players that are considered Almeida guys, uh, Eric Remedi, Chofit. Fis Lopez. I mean, all these guys have not performed at, at anywhere close to the rate that they they were su supposed to to perform. And it's also, I think this is also ca kind of where it leads me to the the next point. Point. Well, I'm actually gonna si skip this point because this would transition me to the the fourth point of the downfall for for Al Almeida, where you know, despite the fact that you know he did lash out on the front office and the ownership for not not getting the resource to sign the pl the players that he need you know you can look at the argument of the fact that well yes this quakes ownership is cheap and they definitely did not give him him the the money to of course develop get the players that he re really need but you can also say that you know some of the players that he got is they were on big big salary and are really kind of consider almeida guys and that you know th those player when they they decided to play play when almeida decides to, to play them and they didn't really had any success i mean that's kind of on almeida too because you know when you get the guys that that you you need and they don't perform then it's pretty much on you as the person that basically decided to sign some of these players so again while i do do in somewhat agree that you know i feel like the quakes ownership once again has fa failed to support even some of the best head coach in the league and i i i, I still feel like almeida is definitely considered one of the best best head coach if he is 
with the right team and he does get the backing but you also could could argue on the other end and a a, a good argument that you know Almeida simply just made made some really bad signing and just we're hoping that he can recreate some some of the he can bring in some of the players that he used to 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 play un, under him and, and be finding similar success doing the during their time to move to MLS and basically play for the Quakes when in reality that's just not how how it turned out in 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 his tenure. And then of course as I, I talked about uh the third point which I skip skip earlier is that he was very stubborn in terms of his lineup choices and that all really depends on the the way that you know he does have it has his favorites and I know every single head coach have their their favorites and have have their players that is in the doghouse but I feel like like Almeida de- definitely ha- has his, his favorites and definitely have players that is kind of in his doghouse and that you know when you are playing in in the Almeida doghouse you know that it is almost impossible if not you're definitely not going to get out out of it and when you're also a guy that that is is the favorite of Almeida and one b- great example of really the, the the favorite for Almeida is Andy Rios. I mean, the reason why Andy Rios have played for so long for Almeida, despite the fact that he clearly is nowhere near it to be a quality player in MLS, is, is he's he's just Almeida's favorite, and he's going to choose him no matter the the performance that 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 Rios was, which again was nowhere near to be be as good as what we thought it was going to be the case. Uh, and then of course of course the the next thing besides lashing out on the front front office which again anytime when you do do that you are going to get immediately fired but the reason why the quakes didn't do, do so is because of that sticky situation where they simply just cannot fire Almeida without have to break the the bank and and trying to 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 pay him the amount that that, that they would do if they do get rid of him and then of course is playing players out out of position and going with some weird weird for formation i mean this was really this season where this is also kind of part part of the sabotage plan where you know almeida just simply don't care anymore like he just throw up in his hands just try this crazy kind of formation and keep playing players that clearly are not playing in their natural position and just dare the 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 front office to fire him in fact i think that's kind of sums up almeida's uh season for the quakes this year where it's almost like he, he is daring for the the quakes front office to eventually fire him and this is also why there's a lot of quakes fans that is finally happy the fact that the front office did the right thing and did something that they should have done back in in the the off season which is basically get rid of almeida and then of course the last thing that kind of is the downfall is that there's been multiple reports that almeida has lashed out on the fan on, on fans too and that you know when you are a head coach and you know there's one thing of lashing out to the front office but when you lash out to the fans yeah that's definitely you basically just lost the credibility of uh, uh, the fan base and there was just multiple times that we have incidents where fans definitely were lashing out on almeida i mean even in his last game game with nashville sc you know a fan basically you know something explicit toward him and almeida was once again ready to fight fight him, him too and that we also know earlier this season he kind of got into a confrontation with a a fan in the middle of the the game and that overall it's just not a good good look in ter- terms of gaining trust to the fan base and then i think in the last game that almeida ever coached the fans actually boo boo him which you know i i definitely don't don't like when when fans basically boo their their own players unless you know they they are really are not living up to expectation or even head coaches that is be, being boo unless again if they they start just going on this miserable run run in in the season but you know i'm kind of surprised that it actually took until the last game that almeida has coached that he finally got got boo from the 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 fans because with all the things that he he has done you know th- this was really the this year and especially i think these last couple games was really the time when that honeymoon period that the fan base had with Almeida was completely gone, and this is when 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 a lot of fans started to really tur- turn on him. Now, uh, moving forward for for the Quakes, and oh, you know when I talk about all these downfall, believe me, this is not actually the only downfall that has happened for for Almeida during his tenure for the Quakes. I mean, there are some that I ha- haven't mentioned. Probably one that I should have put on the board is that he really lost. The, the locker room and it's not a big surprise that he, he he lost the locker room because i 
did say that, you know, when you basically lash out on the front office and multiple times have said that you want to quit playing for the team, what should players want to play for, for him? I mean, I will also say that at least at least this season, even with with the players at times getting getting resorts and show some, some resiliency of coming back from resort, I think deeply you can t tell that a lot of these players were mentally checked out and that they just simply don't want to play under Almeida and are not comfortable whatsoever in the the form the crazy formation that Almeida basically put every single game. But I think the other thing that you can also say is a downfall, and this is kind of more toward the mental side, is that I don't think Almeida was ever the same after <coughs> the situation with his father passing away and then his assistant head coach and his good friend Ben Benjamin Galindo obviously suffer suffer from from a cancer and had to had emergency brain surgery and almost passed away be, because of that and you know that is kind of a thing that I do do show sympathy toward Almeida because you know it's not easy to lo lose a family member member I definitely experienced that last season with my dad passing away and yeah it can definitely change a, a person and I think you can definitely see Almeida was in pain and that maybe this is also the reason why he maybe need to, to, to have some, some time off to kind of get his mind back back to where he he was. Though, you know, that doesn't seem like it's the case because there's already multiple jobs in Liga MX that's been linked with Almeida that being the head coach of them. It's especially his former head coach, Chivas, is looking to, to try to, to hire him back. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what will happen with Almeida. And, you know, I, I wish him, him the, the best and that. That hopefully he is going to to go to a team and find some su success with them. I mean, you know, I, I have I haven't really keep, keep track of some of these former head coaches with the Quakes. I mean, the only one that I kind of keep track of is Dominic Kitner because of him kind of bouncing around the league as an assistant head coach. But most of them, you know, they kind of just di this disappear, and we haven't really heard a lot about them. That's not going to be the case with Almeida. We're definitely going to still hear about Almeida and see how he's going to. To, to do do uh, do against in uh, his, his future team and especially most likely he, he's gonna be the future Chivas head coach down in Liga and Matt case now moving forward for the quakes now in terms of right right now who is gonna be taking charge of this this head coaching gig on an interim basis it's actually gonna be the quakes two head coach Alex Carvalho that's gonna be take charge of this team on an interim basis with Steve Ralston, Chris Wondolowski, and Lucho Fusco as his intern, which, yeah, you know, there's there some familiar name. By the way, I'm surprised that, that Steve Ralston is still with the Quakes because I thought he left the, the Quakes after he was an interim head coach uh, near near the end of that disastrous 2018 team season. But it seems like he is still there, and he's actually going to be an assistant. Obviously, Wando being an assistant head coach, I know a lot of fans would want him to be be either in the front office role or even in the coaching role and it seems like we're we're about to see see that that with him being in the as an assistant head coach for the Quakes and then Lucho Chofusco he's actually the the current assistant head coach of Quakes too so it's not a surprise that he's also jo joining the the assistant coach staff because you know when you're an assistant coach all of the the main head, head Head coach or the interim head coach right now that is Alex Carvalho you might as well just jo join him him there too which is exactly what is happening in this case though that being said you know we don't know exactly if Alex Carvalho is going to get this on a permanent basis most likely it's not going to happen because you know I don't think this is going to be like the situation similar to what we saw with RSL and the the Vancouver Whitecaps where you know their interim head coach eventually become permanent head coach and you know in history when when the quakes do fire their head coach they usually don't just hire the, their their interim head coach on a permanent basis but you know there have already been rumors that there's been 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 head coach that has been been interest in the quakes job uh guys like ian russell luchi gonzalez and even hugo perez is linked with the quakes job i mean out of all three of these names the name that excites me the most is Hugo Perez because we know how he has worked wonders with that El Salvador national team. And I also think that that probably is going to be the least likely that will ha happen, even though I know I've said before in the News of the Week episode in the past that Hugo Perez is actually interested in trying to coach in MLS and that, you know, maybe the Quakes could be 
a team that he might be interested, especially with the way that El Salvador is not going to be be going to to the World Cup this this season. Though they still do have the Concacaf Nations League, which I'm pretty sure they're going to be be taking that very seriously. Uh, Luchi Gonzalez, a guy guy that you know he was recently fired with FC Dallas last season, and I don't think Luchi Gonzalez is, is a bad head coach, and especially with this team started to go through a, a youth movement, and that the Quakes have really started to promote their their youth uh, uh, academy. You know, Luchi Gonzalez is the perfect guy to do so. I mean, if you want to 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 continue the the youth movement, he's the perfect guy guy to do so. He has the hit history of able to to do well with guiding some youth, youth players to to play well in, in the league. So yeah, I think Luchi Gonzalez would be a, another name that could could work out for the Quakes. And then of course the the other name is Ian Russell, who he's been kind of linked with with the Quakes for a very long time. Like he actually was a prime candidate all uh, way back in 2018 when you know out of nowhere Almeida basically was was a, a candidate for the Quakes and eventually he was higher from from the Quakes but there could be a case that Ian Russell could could be the main head coach of the Quakes and you know uh you know Russell he hasn't really been been co coaching for a while ever since you know Reno 1868 what what was uh, liquefy and basically was d dissolved because of the pandemic. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see who the Quakes is going to be hired as their next head coach. Which you know I expect that it's probably go not gonna happen this season because the next point I'm gonna say about this team is that I know it's only seven game in the season, but I think this season is pretty much done for the Quakes. Like this season feels like it's a throwaway way season for them, and that you know for the rest of the season, you know I I will still care of. To see how this team, of course, will, will do. And I still hope that they don't finish in the wooden spoon spot. Which, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think, you know, when you look at this squad. A lot of the reason why this squad hasn't performed well in the beginning of this season. Is because of what Almeida has really just kind of sabotaged its team. And I feel like under if there there is a situation where, you know, if Alex Covalo can, can at least organize this team. Or at least be like a normal MLS team for once. I think this team will, will do just fine. Now, will they make the playoffs? No. I don't think they, they will make the playoffs. They're not going to have something similar to what we saw with the Whitecaps under Vanny Sartini's last season. And even with Pablo Mastrani guiding the, this RSL team on an interim basis all the way to the Western Conference Final. But one thing I know is that the Quakes will be, be much more respectable. But they're not going to be, be anywhere close to being the playoffs. I mean, they're already way behind in terms terms of trying to get the playoffs i think they're like eight points behind the 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 last playoff spot right now and you know i know we still have a long way for the season to begin and we've seen before where teams are able to overcome an early season deficit it just doesn't seem like that's going to be the case this season for the quakes i think it's just this is really kind of a throwaway year and it's a shame because we kind of had a feeling that this was going to be the case with the way that you know with almeida you know I, i've said that they should should have got rid of Almeida so sooner and that they should should uh, fire him. Well, they should have fired him in the off season, and, and basically we would not have this situation where seven games in, we're already saying that this is basically a throwaway season for the Quakes. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and also let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to be the next head coach for the quakes but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time